Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna describe how I invest. And this is how uh, I've become successful over time uh, is investing through this type of approach. Um, I've back tested, I've done all these things over the 18 years of my, I, I'd say, investing where I've back tested things, I've tried different things uh, over this 18 years. And really it's morphed into this, which is identifying market conditions, valuations, technical analysis, and tying it all together. Uh, I don't do as much fundamental analysis uh, as I used to uh, earlier. And the reason I don't is it doesn't really work uh, because you need to understand where, money's are, where money is flowing, where it's flowed from, where it's flowing to. Uh, and then usually what happens is money flows kind of indiscriminately into sectors. Now, if the company controls its, its price, its selling price of whatever that product they sell, a commodity company doesn't. But if, if a company does, you can do fundamental analysis, but it doesn't necessarily get you where you want to be. Because you can have a company that's making a lot of money, but the market conditions are going to affect that uh, company like it, all the other companies. So you're going to have times where PE ratios expand, and you're going to have times where PE ratios contract because that's where, how money flows work, how interest rates have an impact on asset values. And your fundamental analysis can say, this company's great, it's making a bunch of money, but it tells you nothing about money flows and where you are in the cycle. You can have the best fundamental company, the balance sheets and everything, and be absolutely wiped out at the top of a commodity market because commodities, they don't control their, their selling price. Or you could be in a company that's that's doing great at the top of a of a boom, and then all of a sudden interest rates go up and their PE ratio gets contracted. The fundamentals look great, but the stock's not going anywhere. It's actually going down even though their earnings are going up because the PE ratio is contracting as interest rates go up uh, for the risk-free return in treasury bonds. And that's that's what I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over the things that I look at. And what I think is happening in market conditions and valuations, uh, and then give you some some overall charts in some of these commodities that look absolutely fantastic, absolutely fantastic. These are long term; they're going to take time to play out. I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow, but over the next 10, 20, 30 years, we could see massive moves, life changing, life altering retirement investment type stuff. So let me jump in here. I'm going to tell you how I invest and what I look at uh, for investments and what you shouldn't be looking at. And this is based off of my own experience investing over the past 18 years. Uh, my background is in engineering. I, I look at things from a statistical probability standpoint. I look at tertiary effects. I look at direct effects. And what I did is I've, I've, I've gathered all this information up uh, from the years. And I used, to, I used to read this stuff a ton. I'm, I'm talking research like heck for five, six hours a day, every single day, weekends I do all this, uh, and I really dove into it in my, in my 20s. And I developed a lot of this, and this is kind of my own thesis that I developed um, in my 30s. So here we go. This is, this is how I invest. You guys can shoot holes in it, put it in the comments section if, I, if you think I have something wrong. And I'm going to provide here data and, and the way that I view things. So here is how I invest. So here's here's the way that I look at the the way of investing in the markets. First, I look at market conditions first. That's the first step. And what I look at for market conditions is the real estate cycle. The real estate cycle determines inflation, interest rates, and rotation of money. That is that is what kickstarts everything is the real estate cycle. It'll determine if we're in an inflation or deflation. Deflation, if the real estate cycle is, is, is going into a recession. We are in small inflation when we're in a recovery phase of real estate. And in an expansion phase of real estate, we have high inflation or higher rates of inflation. With inflation, interest rates follow. They chase inflation. Uh, what happens is it creates real negative rates in bonds, which forces people to sell bonds. When people sell bonds, interest rates go up. And when interest rates go up, that has an impact on bond prices and on stock prices, which 
then spurs the rotation of money from bonds and stocks into hard assets and precious metals. Valuations, that's what I look at second. I look to see if the valuations are good for uh, investments. And what I do is I look at ratios. Uh, ratios tell us relative value of assets priced against assets. It tells us where money has flowed, where it is flowing, and where it has flowed from. So I'm looking at the relative, the, the, the rate of change and how much change we have in ratios and what's in an uptrend or downtrend. What is the momentum? Are we, is the momentum in favor of one asset versus another? Is it starting to rotate and turn uh, into a new paradigm where it was going in an uptrend for one asset and now it's going to turn and go down for that same asset? I'm looking at all those things. And that's what we do on this channel. And if you like this type of analysis, please subscribe. We want confluence or an alignment and to identify turning points in market conditions. So we want the alignment of market conditions, valuations, and we want to also look at turning points in interest rates and the dollar. Because if, if we can identify that something is cheap and that the market conditions are changing and, and we're going to go into a different period, we want to position our portfolios for that, uh, that turning point. And we usually what I look at, at for turning points is interest rates and the dollar. And that, that first starts with real estate, identifying the cycle, and then we start to look at interest rates and the dollar to see if it's all turning. And then I use technical analysis to back the thesis and to confirm that the turn is happening. And that's what I do on this channel. I do all of this. And really, if you want to do kind of more advanced stuff, what you do is you tie your, t you, you, you get your market conditions, you find out where it's at, and then you use your technical analysis on the ratios. And if you can, if you can identify which assets uh, are turning and are cheap, then you pile into the undervalued and improving assets uh, against other assets. So we're going into the undervalued assets that are starting to get, their, their values are starting to change against other assets. And that's how you make the most amount of money. Period. There's no other way to make money. You have to go in an undervalued asset or an asset that is increasing in value against other assets. That's the only way you make money. There is no other way. You can't get rich by increasing your dollar amount, but can buy less of other assets. So if you're in an asset that goes up in price, but can buy less of other assets, you just got poorer. If that makes sense. And it, it, it should make sense from a logical perspective. Now, here's your guide and what to focus on. This is what I focus on and what I do not focus on. I do not focus on short-term account values in my portfolio. It does not matter. If I bought something at a little bit wrong of a time, I continue to cost average into the undervalued changing condition market. I do not focus on news. I am not focused on price as a confirmation of being right or wrong. That's price. Remember. I do focus on momentum. I'm looking for things to, to be changing at a bottom. In the bottom, we can, we can see very large swings in volatility. That's why I don't use price. I'm looking at momentum and the buying pressure and selling pressure in relationship to each other. That is what really matters, not the price at the bottom or top. I'm looking at changes of pressures. And I can, if you look at some of my other videos, I show that in my technical analysis, go into my playlist and look at the technical analysis. I can show you what that momentum looks like in those videos. I also focus on value. I'm talking about the ratios and how ratios are reacting to each other. If we are in an, an asset that is vastly underpriced, the money has flowed out of it uh, for the most part, and the momentum is changing, that is where we want to be. That's the long-term approach and where we want to accumulate assets for the next six months to three years is we focus on that value. And if it's being very volatile and your, your price is going up and down a lot, we want to be trying to pick off those bottoms because we know with time that the structural momentum changes are changing in our favor. We're coming out of a bottom and the value's there. The money will flow eventually back into it. And we want to focus on market conditions. Um, with the real estate. That's our driver of inflation. That's what's changing the entire market condition environment. 
and I use technical analysis to confirm all of these things are happening. That's what I, I try to focus on. I'm going to give you examples, okay? So here is the market, uh, the real estate cycle. Recovery phase, expansion phase, hyper supply phase, and recession phase. In a recovery phase, which is low inflation, you want to be in stocks and real estate. In an expansion phase, you want to be, uh, it's going to be more inflationary. You want to be in commodities, precious metals, real estate, or non-dollar asset type investments like emerging markets or something like that, or, or Canadian assets. And then in a hyper supply phase and recession phase, I kind of lump these two together. That's going to be deflationary. That's where you get your crashes. It comes from the real estate market, the big crashes. And that's going to be bonds and cash is where you want to be hiding out in. You don't want to be any, anywhere else. And here's your cycle. And you can see this cycle through housing starts. You're going to see the recovery phase, the expansion phase. And, and the expansion phase, the only difference is this is the average housing unit build, the long-term occupancy average. That's what we need to be building. And we just cycle amongst that uh, below and above it. So here is the new privately owned housing unit starts. I put the average demand in there, which is what we cycle about. And this is just new homes being built. The real estate cycle is recession, uh, recovery, expansion above the red line expansion. And then we go back below the red line is a recession. This is a hyper uh, supply phase. So it just cycles back and forth amongst the average. And one thing to keep in mind, the farther, the, the farther we're above the line, the further this goes up, this means that we are in an expansion phase and it's going to be more inflationary. The 70s were a highly inflationary period, and that's why these things go up so much. And they were long-lasting. This was a spike and kind of came down. And we want to be coming up. The faster and higher this goes up, the more inflationary it's going to be. The slower it goes up, you're going to have inflation, but it's not going to be as much inflation. I think we're going into an inflationary period right now. We're going into an expansion phase, but I don't know if it's going to be a highly inflationary period. It will be inflationary, but I don't know if it'll be as high as the 70s because we had all of this massive move higher in the 70s. I think we're going to go up. I think it's going to be inflationary, and I think it's going to be long-lasting. We're going to have a long uh, housing boom. But I don't think we're going to be able to build as many homes uh, as quickly as we did in the 70s. So I don't know if it'll be as inflationary. And we created this large deficit because if you look back at the last market boom, we had a problem. We, we gave a whole bunch of bad loans out. We had a massive amount of foreclosures. And we were in a hyper supply phase of real estate. That combination did a one-two punch to the, to the real estate sector. The real estate sector got the one-two punch and we came all the way down and we underbuilt for a very long time. That's what this red section is. It means that we were un we, we built far too few of homes, which then created a, a housing deficit. That deficit's going to manifest itself in us having to build a lot more homes in the future. And what that looks like from these articles is I grabbed U.S. housing shortage will be around for years to come, says Taylor Morrison, CEO, and that was just published. The housing shortage is worse than ever and will take a decade of record construction to fix, new report says. And that's June 16th, 2021. Housing supply is currently at its lowest level since 1970s in terms of inventories. Goldman Sachs says the shortage could last for years due to millennial home buying and fewer starts. Housing starts is what they're talking about. Uh, there will also won't be enough foreclosures to make a meaningful impact on the market in terms of the moratoria and the foreclosures from that. Uh, they don't see it being a, a big deal. Here's the demographics trends that imply 1.3 million new households per year uh, coming on up between 2020 and 2024. Your demographics are supporting higher home prices. Now, you're saying 1.3 million, and if you look back here, we were building only 500,000 or less homes for a few years. We created a huge deficit in homes. And that's why these guys are saying that there's a huge housing shortage and that it's going to take some time to recover. We have a massive shortage of homes. And the demographics are supporting, they want more homes, not less. And if you notice, it's ramped up from 09. 
the demographic trends. So I think that we're going to have uh, a sustained real estate boom, which is inf- inflationary and a tailwind behind our commodity investments. Here's home builders are constrained by the lack of available labor and land. And we've got the construction job opening rate, which has gone way higher. And we've got the average length of time authorization to completion also going up. So it's it's taking longer to complete. And we've got a lot of job openings that aren't being filled. We've got foreclosures following the expiration of pandemic-related forbearance should provide a modest boost to the supply of homes for sale. This is what it looks like in terms of percent. It's been declining over time. Uh, And again, I don't think it's going to be enough to reverse the real estate market. And Goldman and other firms that look and do this analysis also agree with that viewpoint. They confirm with that. And why this time is different, and I know that's like the worst thing to say. What I'm looking at is market conditions. I'm not saying that something's going up and is going to remain going up in like a bubble. What I'm saying is the market conditions are different this time than we've seen in recent and even in in all of history. And they're different because of this. We could be changing from a declining interest rate environment to an increasing interest rate environment And it's a secular change. It's a big long-term change. And why I'm saying this is different, not based off of history, but based off of the people that are alive and have experienced this. Not many people alive have been of working age to experience this secular change from declining interest rates, which have been declining for 40 years and are now about to turn higher, I think. This is a big secular change that's coming and happening right now. It's based off of real estate. It's based off of inflation. And we could see inflation happen for, and in higher interest rates for 10, 20 years is what I'm saying. Valuations have also never been this out of whack against each other. We're at all time highs and all time lows, depending on what asset you're looking at. That is different. We have the big secular interest rate change that people have not experienced in their life, and we have the largest, the largest differences between assets that we've ever seen in terms of stocks and commodities. And I'm going to show you in some charts what that looks like. Real estate has never been so short on homes. We've never had this large of a deficit of homes because of an underbuilt scenario that we just covered. And again, the monetary base has never been so unaccounted for by gold. If we have an inflationary period, gold accounts for the money supply. And if we've never had as much money created and unaccounted for, we could see the largest, biggest boom in commodities that anyone has ever seen in their life. And I'm going to show you what this looks like in the charts. So here's long-term interest rates back to 1790. We've had these long, secular, declining interest rate environments over time. And now we're just in 2020, 2021, at the lowest we've ever been in interest rates. And I think we're putting in a long-term bottom. And it's going to take time for this to to, to turn around, don't worry. But I think it's going to turn and we're going to go into an increasing interest rate environment at some point. One of these. Here is the monetary base to gold ratio. This is one that I think is massive. This is a descending wedge pattern. The descending wedge pattern, what it does is it kind of comes all the way up to a point, and we may take a little bit more time, but we're about to break out at any point here to the upside. What this means is that gold is going to account for the monetary base like it has in history and potentially go more towards an average of about 3.5. That, that This is kind of the average of a gold standard type move. And if this goes and comes back to account for it, you're going to see a massive revaluation of gold higher. And gold is tied to all commodities. That is our inflation measurement. And commodities are an inflation hedge. So this chart is signaling that we could see a huge revaluation of gold based off of the monetary base. 
Here's the commodities to stock ratios. Whenever they are high like this, stocks are undervalued, commodities are overvalued. When it's low down here, commodities are undervalued. And we're at the lowest time frame ever of commodities being priced against stocks. This ratio is saying that commodities have never been so cheap. Commodities are going to be revalued higher. And why is this alignment so great? Well, we've got this alignment here. We've got the alignment with the monetary base to goal ratio, and we've got the alignment that interest rates are so low and that we're about to turn. So if interest rates go higher, this I think will go higher because we're in an inflationary period, which is going to account for it. And that's when gold accounts for it. This was an inflationary period here. This was an inflationary period here. And we're going to have a massive revaluation potential of a long-term secular revaluation going forward. And all of these are in alignment with each other, which is rare. It's confluence. Valuations are all lining up and market conditions. Dow to gold ratio, extremely cheap. We are cheaper or as cheap as the boom of the 1929. And it's going to crash down lower, I think. And we're going to see a big move lower, probably all the way to a one-to-one -one relationship even, because we've been on such a large uh, up movement to the upside. Oil to gold ratios just breaking out, signaling that if oil is an inflation hedge and we're starting to see inflation, oil is going to outperform gold. It's going to account for that inflation. And we're seeing that inflation is being accounted for through oil, which means that if this breaks to the upside, which we just turtle headed out of here, if we see this thing break and continue to move higher, uh, which I expect to happen, uh, it's, it's signaling that we're going into an inflationary period. And now all the inflationary periods uh, looking back, like 2000 to 2008 was an inflationary period. This ratio compressed up and higher. And I think we're going to see that here any second. Here's copper to gold ratio. Same thing. Copper starting to outperform uh, gold. It did it in the last 2000 to 2008 cycle. It did it in the 1970s, this big old cycle here. And then gold took off after. So this, 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 this relationship is breaking its downtrend line. And we can see copper outperform. We're seeing momentum change. The momentum on the long-term charts are all changing to an inflationary environment. We can see it in the commodity charts. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Interest rates, I think, are going to follow. Here are different commodity charts I follow on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already, but these are some of the ones that I cover. Here is uranium, URA. Momentum's going to the downside here, and you can see it flattening out. Now, just recently, from 2020 and on, we're seeing a momentum change and we're starting to move on up in the upward direction. Momentum down, momentum flat, momentum up. That is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for momentum changes on the big picture view. Oil price. This momentum's been going to the upside the entire time, but short term, we've been going sideways since 2008. Breaking to the upside right here. We have whenever you break these big patterns, we had another large pattern that broke right here, big old pattern. We had a big long, big long term move higher. I think we're going to see this same big long term move higher, and it's going to go up substantially. That's oil price, gold price. We're ready to break out at any point here. We break out over 2,000, 2,100. I think you're going to see a large move higher, just like this happened in the 70s. Platinum price, downtrend break, retest large move higher silver price here's what we're we're, we're we're scrolling out here we're coming on up we could still move sideways doesn't really matter on the short term big long-term picture we break 40 you know 49 50 dollars big move higher big move higher so what i'm trying to 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 sum up here is this is what i look for we have alignment in commodities for being cheap on the valuation We've got real estate that's going to an expansionary phase, which is inflationary, which is going to cause interest rates to go higher. It's going to cause a rotation of money, and that money's going to come into commodities because that's where it's not at. It's all in stocks right now. And in stocks, we're, we're, we're starting to see these things kind of lose momentum. We've got the, 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 the big up move, and then it's kind of going sideways. We're seeing bearish engulfing patterns all over the place. I think at some point, and I don't know exactly when, this is big long-term picture view. You know, it may take six months or six years for this stuff to really manifest itself very well. Somewhere in that range, six months to, to, to a couple years. 
but all this is going to start coming and i think you're going to see a big rotation of money into commodities that's why all these charts are painting these pictures they're all breaking out to the upside now i'm not saying that the short short term in terms of months that we're just going to rocket higher we might rocket higher i'm not saying we won't i'm just saying big picture big long-term moves it's coming and it's it's going to be life-changing for most people i am he heavily invested in this stuff myself i'm not trying to sell you guys anything. What I'm trying to, to say is look into this. Look into commodities. This is just financial education. Look into commodities. Look at the companies that you might like. Develop a financial strategy. Develop position sizes to reduce your risk. Subscribe to the channel. I, I teach a lot of this stuff. Check my playlists. My playlists are filled with these types of videos. They're here to educate you guys on what to look for, how to play this, kind of your mindset of what you need, um, and how to become a better investor. This is what's worked for me. Uh, I think we're, we're seeing life-changing things happening right in front of our face right now. If you guys like this content, please give me a thumbs up. If you disagree or if you have any comments, put it in the comment section. Love to hear your guys' opinion. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.